Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we will be solving code forces round 90822 problem C anonymous informant. Okay, pause the video, read the question, then I will explain. Cool, let's go. So in the question, it is given that we will be given an array B, let's say, and we have an informant who told that. So uh, in a layman terms or basically what will happen that initially there was an array A. So it will be something like a1, a2, a3 till an. Now we have an informant who told that that uh, there is an operation which have been performed exactly k times. Okay, and the final array had become something like this b1, b2, b3 till b of n. Okay, now what is that operation? That operation is nothing but first of all, what we'll do? We'll select a point x in this array. Okay, and then we will sorry and that point will be a pivot point okay and that basically nothing means uh, that uh, according to the question definition it was nothing but a of x should be equal to the x that is whatever index we will be selecting the value should be equal to that index okay and the second thing is that arrow will be rotated left exactly x times so what it is saying that let's say let's say if we have an array something like this 4 2 3 4 7 and this indices will be one based so 1 2 3 4 5 or let's say he, and here it was 6 okay consider something like this so here we have two possibilities either this one sorry three possibilities okay so uh, we can select either this in this index or this index or this index why because for all these indexes we have a of x that is a of 3 equals to 3 right similarly a of 4 equals to 4 a of 6 equal to 6 now the second part of this operation this both both part are of one operation like in one operation we will be doing both the things right so if we have selected it let's say if we have selected this three then we'll shift this entire array three times shift this entire array three times so if we'll shift this one one time then each element will kind of you know get rotated by one so the end result will look something like this this two will come here three will come here then Four, then seven, then six, and this four will get pushed to the last. Okay, but we have to uh, here we have chosen this right. So uh, and the value was three, so we have to rotate three times. This is only first time. So second time it will become something like this: three, then four, then seven, then six, four, and two. And again after rotating, what it will become? Four, seven, six, four, two, three. Okay, so this will be our operation if we select uh, this will be our array if we select this index 3 okay now our new index if we write down over here will become 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay here we can see that we have this 4 like the only element which can be pivoted is this index right so let's say if we if we select this index then a result of this operation whatever the operation mentioned in the question is so we'll have to move it four times right so what we can say that if we'll move this four times or uh, let's go step by step let's see what's happening so if we'll move one time then what become the array will become seven six four two three four then one more time then it will become seven sorry six four two three four seven then one more time it will become four two three four seven six right and then one more time and finally it will become two three four seven six four okay so that was the question so what was the question that initially we are given an array a okay then after k times after or after k operation exactly k operation will have array b and informant has given that and uh, like in the question will be given this array b let's say there was an array a and uh, performing this operation k times we ended up with array b now informant has told us about this operation now we want to validate whether it's possible or not that if given array a or like we have final array b right so is there any array a possible for this value of a if there is any array a what i am trying to say is initially there was array a right then we performed operations k times k operations and then we ended up with b so given b is it possible that a exists or not if yes then we can return yes else we will return no so that is the question okay 
so i hope the question is be clear but i want to point out to you one thing while we were running this while we are running this uh, or performing the operations have you guys noticed one thing that when we selected this three right when we selected this three and we shifted it three times that means we will end up this three having at the last place if we'll see here at the end after three operations we have this three at the last place similarly similarly when uh, when we consider this array and performed the operation by selecting four as private element then we ended with four as the last element and that's also makes sense why because if we are at x right if we are at let's say index x and the value is a of x that means one two three four dot 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 x if we'll shift one that means this one will go here right so if we'll shift two then this two will become here and we'll cut something like this so if we'll shift three times then this three will end up here so what we can say is that what like the number of operations we are performing or the number of times we are performing uh, shifting this not performing the operation okay the number of times we are shifting it the same number will end up here why because because that number was equal to the index the number was equal to the index and the same number was pushed at the last because we have performed the same number of times the left shifting operation left shifting operation so from here what we can realize that if there was a okay we performed the operation one time then we have let's say a dash or a1 a dash it's array so let's write array one array one then performed the operation second time then we got array two okay then performed operation third time we got array three okay similarly we performed the operation for kth time then we got our final answer b or the final array b okay so <coughs> so from the b what we can say what we can say that we from our earlier observation what we know what we know that what we know that if there is some number right if there is some number over here if there is some number over here and the initial state so whatever the initial state from here like see if we are going from like array of like k minus 1 or operation to b -th, like the final array so whatever the number whatever number we have picked from this or whatever the number we have picked as a private element in this the second last or before the last operation that number will appear over here what i am trying to say listen carefully okay so if i am saying that my final array is something like this 4 2 3 7 1 6 3 okay this is my final array or i should say b that means if if i was coming from something here let's say here we have a then we have performed the operation one by one and in the kth operation after the kth operation we ended up p that means in the last operation here it is three that means in the last operation we have shifted it three times left so how can we get that we can simply mark it three index let's say one two three how many elements are there seven four five six seven so here it would be three here it would be what the value should be here if we'll simply shift this one so we can have okay let's shift this one uh three four times or sorry three times so seven will become the last element then we can have three over here then we can have two over here and then we'll have four over here and similarly <coughs> six over here and one over here so if if after like the first operation not this is the last operation last operation we are performing then we would have something uh, this we would have this array only this is the only possibility then only we'll be able to do three shifts three shifts in the left three shifts in the left and we'll end up with this array okay so this is the most important point to understand what i am claiming over here is that if we have this number right if we have this number then this number must have been the pivot point must have been the pivot point because we already know that if we are selecting x or ax the xth index as our pivot that means in the next operation or in the in the 
operation that we perform in by selecting this pivot element this x element will end up in the last position that's what we saw over here right we saw also the examples in the earlier so if we have selected three we ended up with three when we selected four as our pivot element we ended up at four right and also we discussed that it makes sense that if we'll make one shift that means this will be at the end if we'll make two shift then this will become the end and we also know that if a of two are we selecting the second index the value will also be two then only we'll able to will be able to select this index okay so i hope this point was clear so what we established was the final b the final b position if this is the b position then the only position we have possible we only position we have possible for just before one just before you know the final b positions the last operation the array must have this one right so from this array only we can get this array so similarly if we want to perform one more operation one more operation then we can simply do that but yeah so now let's see here we are getting the seven right here we are getting the seven so what we can do is again we can you know in the similar manner we can rotate this back like seven times okay because that will be the coordinate right or that will be the values or the earlier arrays okay so there will be one case let's say let's consider a small scenario let's say i have number one two three okay and index will also be one two three right so let's say this is my final array this is my final array okay so what we can say from here is that we have the last element three that means in the previous in the previous operation also in the previous operation also we would have this three at this third positions right because let's say if if there would have seven element and this was three so what would have we have we say that before this final array we would have array in such a such a fashion that a of three will become equal to three right but here but here we don't have this many elements we only have three elements right so what we can say that in the last operation it was three will be at third place in operation before that three will also be at three place because see if we'll shift this if we'll shift this three times what will happen nothing it will again return to this one two three if we'll again shift this one two three times so let's say if our a was one two three one two three then if we have left shifted it then our array would have become one two three by selecting three as pivot right then again if we have done an operation by selecting three as pivot so what you mean realize that it's nothing it's basically just a loop we are starting we are ending we are starting we are ending so there might be a case there might be a case where we can end something like this so let's say one two one two something like this one two one two then maybe we'll first of here it is two three four five six so in this scenario whenever we will know see what we'll do if we'll select this pivot element this two will go to this place sorry this place this will two go will to this place this two will come at its place and this two will take this two's place so ultimately we can see that we are forming a loop we are forming a loop over here and why why we have uh, considered this or why we are care why we are talking about this loop so now after all uh, like we have a basic idea like how can we you know retrace back our path so what what we can say simply so let's say if i have b then can i calculate the state just before it yes yes i can calculate that so let's say it's b1 similarly if i have b1 can i calculate the state just before it yes i can calculate that so similarly can we calculate in the similar fashion can we calculate a of n yes we can calculate that but now here's the twist so in the question in the question we have possibility right either answer can be yes or answer can be no meaning if we will be able to trace it back to a that means that means yes answer was possible or this valid operation or our informant was right but if we are not able to trace it back if we are not able to trace it back then our answer will be no but now now we don't know this a we don't know this a then how will we say that how will we say that 
whether this transformation or recursion or recursive you know retracing backtracking to this a is okay i mean this can be r a right or this can be r a so when will you get to know that which is our actual a so first of all in the question it is mentioned that we have to perform exactly k operations okay so let's say even if even if we were able to perform let's say like get k value was 4 and we are able to perform this kind of operation or this was b right b is the final b1 b2 b2 in tracing back we can go up to let's say b20 b20 and k was 4 what does this signify this signifies that we can even if we will start from this position we can do perform 20 operation and end up b okay then in that scenario this will become our a right but let's say if k we want k is equal to 4 right so in that scenario we can simply start with b4 if we'll take just b4 or we consider this a a equals to b4 then in scenario we'll go back to b3 then b2 then b1 and then b so in this scenario we'll just have to do four operation so what we can see that what if if the number of operations performed if the number of operations or the number of times we can backtrack this b the number of times we can backtrack this b is greater than equal to k then in this scenario we will simply return yes but if there is any scenario where this number of operation is less than k that means we can't we can't solve our problem okay and one more observation one more observation that this k this k or wait that we will come to a later part okay so now let's say so this is our array this is our final array okay and we know that if we have anything we have indices started at 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 or we can say that we have indices 1 2 n right 1 2 n now if i have some number n plus 1 if i have some number n plus 1 is that even possible is that even possible because see k cannot be 0 if you'll see in the question if you'll see in the question k is from 1 that means we have performed at least one operation we have performed at least one operation so k always will be equal to greater than 1 so if i am saying that we have some number which is greater than n which is greater than n not n plus 1 which is greater than n okay let's say which is greater than n whether it's n plus 1 or n plus 2 or any number if it is greater than n that means that means the very basic assumption or the very basic uh, you know the condition we have found out over here is that if we are moving some number a of x is equal to x is pi but then that number itself will be at the last position so now we know that we know that if if i have some value let's say here it is some value okay and it is greater than n greater than n so that means in the previous step in the previous step while selecting while selecting this we would have this number n plus something and the index but we know that then we cannot select this then we cannot select this number why because this index can never be greater than n never be greater than n right so this index will always be less than equal to n okay and if this value if this value is greater than is not less than equal to n then we won't be and to be precise if not equal to i okay if this value is not equal to i then we won't take it but if, if we are saying that after one operation this number n plus one the number whichever number landed over here is greater than n that means in the previous step it should be in such a position where it index should be equal to n right where it index should be equal to n but we know that that is not possible so in that scenario what we can do we can simply see out no and we can return okay i'll repeat once again what i am saying is if if the last element is n plus, greater than n okay if last element is greater than n that means that means the array it, if it is b let's say b1 then in b1 we know that we know that from our earlier observation that if the last element is 3 that means the previous step would have in the previous step we have selected this element as or the 3 as pivot element similarly if we have last element as 5 then in previous element we would have selected 
five index five has our private element right but if it is greater than n that means in the last last you know before last operation the value of array should be in such a way that we can select n plus or like whatever let's say it was n plus 1 okay so n plus 1 so we would have selected n plus 1 th index but we know that n plus 1 th index is not possible that means this this is not possible this final state cannot be possible that's why in this scenario we can simply see out no and can return from the or we can simply see out no and we can return okay we can simply return no okay now but but let's say if we are something like this we are ending up here some position some positions we are ending up ending up ending up but how many times how many times we should do this so what we what we will realize over here is see if if we'll keep on keep on going if we'll keep on going or you know keep on rever reversing that is going from b to b1 b2 till a okay so ideally we have performed the operation on a sequentially and we have ended with b right so in, in total we know that we have k operations but here you will see that the k value sorry the k value can go to 10 to the power 9 but one thing one thing you will realize that the n value is maximum n value is maximum less than or equal to 10 to the power 5 2 into 10 to the power 5 to be precise okay so so in the worst scenario in the worst scenario we would make only these many calls why because i mean that's a very safe to assume why because let's say if we have indexes something like this 4 5 6 7 something like this so if i would have any number if i would have any number which is greater than equal to this uh, 7 which is greater than 7 which is greater than 7 then if this number if this number somehow comes here if this number somehow comes here that means we know that we know that after that or like you know there was no possible no possible values or no possible array from here which could have ended up in such a state that this the end value is greater than n okay so what i am saying is if let's say if we have this array okay if we have this array and here we have x okay and this is greater than 7 or let's say n and we end up in this last position in end up in the last position that means that means whatever the value or let's say if it was b and it was b1 we are going from you know this one the actual operation will be done from this manner but where we are tracking back okay so if we got somewhere somewhere that this x lands up here this x lands up here we know that the previous state won't be possible the previous state won't be possible over here okay and now the worst possibility is if i have n numbers if i have n numbers okay if i have n numbers then maybe after like you know after the last position or like first second third all the tries i have done like but nth move after the nth move this positions or this x landed up over here okay so in that in that worst case in that worst case how many operations we would have done this n many operations okay okay so we know that in the worst case in the worst case we can do n operations okay and n can maximum be 10 to the power 5 right so that will be okay but in reality it won't happen we, it won't go till this much why because there are two possibilities if the answer exists if the answer exists that means that means what will happen if i reach somewhere like let's say here it was 3 okay if i reach in such a state that here it it was 3 and its previous state also in its previous state also i have reached over here such that this state was 3 so let's say if it was b right if it was b and this was b1 okay and we would have come from somewhere over here so what does that mean if this was the last element of in the final array if this is the last element that means in the array before in the array before we would have three over here for third index right and if we have three over here okay three over here that means that means if we'll 
mark it as look okay let me make it of same size one two three four six one two three four five six okay so that means this three should be here right one two three but we know that this three was here and we have kind of reversed it so like let's say better to write it one two okay this was, was let's say four and five so here also it will be four and five okay and now here it will be one two and this will be three okay so similarly if i have three over here three over here right then what will be this this will be one this will be two and this will be again what five four three okay we are reversing this operation because we heard you know we would have selected this pivot the actual operation would be that we would have selected this pivot then we would have end up in this then we have selected this pivot and then we would have end up in this state but if you'll we'll see one thing that we would have we had three over here and in the previous state also we had three over here so if you'll we'll see that we are doing nothing we are doing nothing but we were in this state okay one two three five four three and again we ended up into same state one two three five four three so it's like nothing that let's say we are in state b or let's say we are state x then we are going to state y and we are state y we are going to state x so it's kind of recursive or you know we are just iterating over again and again and again so that means that means if we had we had we had ended up you know three ones then ending up three again ending up three again that means we have you know our found a solution in such a way that the numbers will keep on repeating that means we can always make any number of k no matter what for better understanding let's say all the numbers are one okay so we know that for the first time the last number was one okay if we will to perform one operation that means again the last operation will be one so if we'll perform one operation again the last number will be one so you will see realize that no matter how what value of k we have we have we will always be able to perform those many operations so extending the same idea if we'll see for three that once we have three right we have came three place back we have three okay we have came three place back we have came three place back we have three and if we'll go again three place back again we will have three so what we can do we can simply do we select we'll be selecting this three element as pivot and we'll keep on moving we'll keep on moving so if so what does this realize that if we have started at some number let's say i if we started at some number or better to you know say the index whatever you want to say that will be fine okay so if we started with this number then then we ended up with the same number that means we can make any number of operations any number of operation operations and we can simply return yes but but if if let's say if let's say if we are just you know kind of coming back or retracing back retracing back uh let's say it was something like b b1 we know that this will be always be unique values right b3 till bn and we know the k has only value 2 so that means we will always be able to go over here and never here so in that scenario we can simply return false we can simply return false or how can we achieve that uh, any state is unreachable if the last if the last element is greater than greater than one okay so if we'll come to the solution if we we'll look at the solution what will you see <laughs> first of all we take in the input and what we have done we are taking a set to see whether we have already visited that particular index or that particular number or not okay and we we are checking the last element the last element okay so why we are checking the last element because we know that the, for the last element if we are had if the last element is three that means in the previous step the uh, third index was having value three right so if we'll see that if this is let's say third index one two three and in the next step this three value is at the end that means we can get and if we are here here the value of or the index will be the index or i equals to n minus one and for this 
whatever the value of this 3 we have can be simply done as whatever the value 3 can be simply written as n minus 1 minus 3 okay and plus plus n modulo and why we are doing that because so that it does not get in negative it does not get in negative state okay so that's what i am trying to do the, uh, if the last value or the position we are trying to do see here what we decided that the last element should not be greater than last element should not be greater than uh, you know n but if we will you know move this array if we will move this array again and again or shift this array again and again but if you don't want to shift if you don't want to shift so for here let's say if initially we are at n minus 1 then the here value is 3 right so in the previous situation or the previous value will be just nothing but this index minus 3 okay similarly for this also we can subtract 3 we will end up over here that's why we are adding n so okay that's what we did over here so if we'll see the solution that's what we are doing first of all yeah we are inserting that which index we are at because if we are at the same index that means we are in a loop and we can insert m that's why we are not we are keeping track of uh, you know the index the index we have already covered and then we have subtracted the value so that we can go back to the previous position okay and yep and then we are just taking adding n so that it does not go negative and taking the modulo if it's going out of the bound okay so that's that's how we have iterated so if we found out something then we will simply skip or break this loop okay and else we in that scenario would have ended up with some values greater than m okay and else we can see out yes if that's not satisfied any time that means we have some operation left then only we'll break it right if we'll if we're breaking it that means we have you know covered or moved less than n number of times this loop and we can simply see out yes but if the last element is greater than n that means we can simply see out no so last element will be let's say what i am trying to understand you will make you understand guys is let's say if this was formed and total size was total size was let's say seven okay that means the in the previous step what should be the index of this four how can we calculate it so currently the index is seven right so the next index the next index should be this seven minus four that is equals to three if we'll see that 0 1 2 3 why we are uh, considering 0 from here because this array will be 0 based that's why we have started from n minus 1 okay so i hope that would be clear to you but if you guys have any doubt ping me because i have submitted the solution this was this solution and if you guys have any doubt on this question let me know in the comment section i'll reply as soon as possible okay thank you guys